Arizona needs a football coach. We bring in Shireen Ryan from Zona Zealots to help us sort through the many candidates that are being rumored all over the place. Shireen, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. It's I'm, I'm still kind of in shock that Rich Rod's not the coach anymore. So let's get to that in a minute. We'll We'll put that on the back burner because obviously what's here and now is this coaching search. That's crazy. It's a crazy coaching search. You must be running around then because it seems like an, a new name drops out of the air about uh, every couple hours. Not even every couple hours, like every couple minutes, something else, especially today. It's been a flurry today. What names can we discard? What names seem to be in the running and legitimate candidates? The Western Kentucky coach, um, I think that uh, he made a statement. So I think that we can cross his name off. Um, I'm crossing it off right now. <laughs> I had him written down. Mike Sanford, he's gone. There was uh, Kevin Sumlin's gone, right? Yeah, someone's gone. That that's what I heard. At some point, maybe not. Maybe not. You tell me. Oh, so I, I Kevin heard Sumlin's still gone. still in the running. Yeah. Okay. I'm hearing Brian Harson, Boise State. Off. Boise State head coach is a possibility. Ken um, Niamatololo, he's the, the real hot candidate right now. That's the name that's been floated around and talked about that he's been given an offer, he's not been given an offer, he's waiting for an offer. He wasn't offered, he's not interested. No, he is interested. No, he's waiting. We'll find out today, like the 50 million so um, but his name is definitely something that somebody who's come up um, <clears throat> so someone a name if he becomes a head coach I mean he's, he's a quarterback yeah he was he a quarterback to practice it a lot no offense because my last name I grew up with is Tahir Zade and no one can pronounce it so I you know I'll so I'll figure it out. But once, um, he also uh, has a clean ship, if you to say that. And um, he was a quarterback. Tate came out today. It's, everybody was saying he's going to run the triple option. And then people said, well, no, that's only because he's at Navy. And he would think if you'd run anything that didn't make his play better. So then Khalil came out and said he basically, was okay. And they say they all want Yates, you know, former players. Dane Crookshank's going to be graduating if he hasn't already. And uh, he's mentioned Yates and Johnson said something. Tony Fields two or three times. Scotty Young two or three times. Khalil's come out and said we want Yates. So that beats in there. Um, because I think for continuity, for recruiting, for all the people that have signed now and TIF, yet they they would honor their commitment or you know not look to be released and things like that. So, Shireen, I'm hoping that uh, the transmission is going through and all the fine people out there are getting all this wonderful insight from you. So, if I ask you anything that you've already covered, it's not because I'm not listening; it's because I didn't hear you. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I'm going to go through names here. So we've got Niamatololo. He's a hot candidate. Someone's a big candidate. Brian Harson from Boise State. You got Bo Baldwin. I've seen his name pop up. He's the Cal well, offensive hot. coordinator. Yeah. We got Neil Brown from Troy. He's 25 and 13 at Troy. One who's well, uh, Helfrich is off the table because he did the thing uh, already said it, that's uh, not happening. I think that's the coach. That has basically that came out and said, or said, I think the Troy coach is off the table. Okay. Taking him <laughs> off. Okay. Marcel Yates. The players want Marcel Yates to stay and be their head coach. Yes. I mean, we've confirmed that he's had an interview and he applied and he wants it. The players want him. Um, but there are, I don't think that he's going to actually get the head coaching job, but I think that they have to keep him for the players. 
nudists and all that stupid in my eyes to keep not keep somebody around in some capacity that almost the entire team is begging for you they should look 10 years down the road what do you mean 10 years you know rich rod made it what seven years he didn't make it like long and call it football i don't think absolutely so are there any other names that uh, I haven't mentioned that are in the running? Did you have Helfrich on your list? Cause he just got I a did job. not have Helfrich. So I don't have to mark him off. I had Rick new Heisel. Uh, 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 the backlash on him was so strong that I think that he, I think he threw his name in the, in the, he threw his hat in the ring. Not a candidate. I don't think he may have wanted the job. Um, the assistant coach from, um, he also said he wanted the job, but I haven't heard his name a lot. Sua, uh, he's a former Wildcat. Then we also have, oh, so, so basically I'm looking at these names and for me as a complete outsider who just knows Arizona football from watching it on TV and listening to you. Ken Niamatololo, if I can get him to be the head coach, that's who I'm hiring. Not even close. Really? Yep. That guy has the respect of everyone. He is an excellent football coach. I would not be concerned with the offensive transition. You keep your offensive coordinator in place. Ken Niamatololo knows football. He can adjust to that. People that know college football know that if you coach it in uh, – an Air Force, Navy, or Army, any of the academies that you have to run, you almost have to run that offense because you can't recruit at the skill positions. You have an undersized team, and you have to run an offense that a bit is a bit gimmicky because the opponents have to prepare for it, and they don't see that offense. They don't practice against that offense all year, and it gives you an advantage. They have to find an advantage because they don't have the athletes and they don't have the practice time uh, that the other teams do. But I definitely, everybody want a lot of people want someone, um, um, the name, um, the, another name that came up was Jeff Fitch, who was the OC Jeff at UCLA. Yep. UCLA. <laughs> he was at Michigan before that. He's, he's interested. Nice yeah. I've heard he's interested. He recruited a California kid. Um, Josh Rosen as his quarterback that he that he coached. So there's that. I don't know if it's a big, big enough name. Name <laughs> that came out today about a big name. I mean, let's not forget the alumni, right? So we've got Ricky Huntley, Arizona legend. Um, you've got Chuck Cecil, Arizona legend, NFL coach, assistant coach at Memphis. And um, also at USC. And of the doll. So those two would really want to be somewhere included. And I know that the NCAA allowed his 10th coach. So, so, so I would put some alumni legends in there because uh, I, I think what's missing is what's been missing for the last. Year I was there. Um, I think what's been missing is the alumni. You know, uh, they're highly revered and and, and been not been what well, I had from the last regime. Um, they need to be on the field. They need to be talking to players. They players need to understand that, you know what the legacy is there. You know, to feel proud of it and and know they can get to the NFL. And that's part of the the thing you know i think those the nfl they know what it takes and they know people and so i, I they have to have them involved some, some somehow Everybody, yeah i think the involvement is very guys. crucial i think that's a great point that you have to bring back i i think if you look at their truly successful programs in college football you see week to week and certainly in the big games and in the postseason games when the NFL players that are currently playing can come back if they've got a Thursday game or a Monday game, whatever the deal is, 
you see throngs of them on the sideline. You see a large level of involvement from the former NFL players and the best players that they've had from recent times on the field for those and, and at events and so forth. So I, I think, yes, people want to see that. And I think that although that's not tangible, it can't be measured that it, there's something about that building that tradition and, and linking the generations and linking the, the, the time there and uh, connecting the past, I think is important. Now, I would make that a tiebreaker in terms of selecting a coach. I'm not going to select my fifth candidate if he's an alumni just because he's an alumni, unless you think you've lost your fan base and you really have a unique situation in a unique place that really needs that understanding of what the atmosphere and the environment and the vibe is there and how we do things here. And that's difficult to find. Right. It's the first time he has gotten that close to the team. These people, um, not only are they revered, but they have so many great cast and um, the fan base don't, some of them, you know, they don't know, like the younger fans, they don't even know who these people are. They should know who they are because the stadiums are plastered in the stadium. There's a reason for that. And um, there's a lot of alumni who come out and said, you know, I was, uh, I was about to happen the next regime. So. All right. So when are we going to know who the next coach is going to be? What would your timetable well, be? Well, they said it, uh, it's been 10 days or today's the 10th day. So they think they need to get somebody in there so fast because so I can last through the weekend. I think that a lot of people want an answer today. It's Friday. Um, or at least, you know, who are, who are the candidates. Something has to come out of Hiki's camp because it just looks, you know, and I know people, they want to know that. Want to know that. At some point, you you got to give, you got to throw a bone, you know, so we know where, where we're headed. Like, like somebody the players can relate to or do you just want somebody to right the ship and not have a, a hostile work environment what is i looking for because I, I i don't know you know where what are the pillars he's looking for what is he you know i don't know i mean that, that part i would what's i could go look up the job qualifications <laughs> online well, there's only so many power five head coaching positions in football. It's a pretty elite class. I would think that you should be able to check most, if not all the boxes of this is a great football coach or, or it's a bit overblown, a really good football coach who also is going to do the right things and represent the program. Well, I think you can do, do both. I think you should be able to find both. Well, I mean, we need somebody who wants to beat the crap out of ASU and her. Absolutely. And doing. <laughs> that and Chip Kelly. We need someone who really wants to beat Chip Kelly's team and who really. And I, here, I'll throw something out there. So USC hired from within and the players love him. I, I would tell him, um, if I'm a player, uh, he's a player's coach. Okay. So what did Oregon do? Oregon, and they brought in Taggart who stole everybody and then left in a year. So then what did they decide? They were like, screw this. This from within. So I don't see why Arizona couldn't do it. At least try it out. For hire from within. Years. I, I don't. I I see Yates as a as a good candidate. I would like to see some alumni in there. Um, I take your word for it on um, the coach, but I think we just want we want to know who it is so that the player we know what the players are leaving or leaving and the players are staying or staying in the commitments or not. We just want some clarity. It's it's, it's late in the game here to uh, be looking for a coach.
So Shireen, considering the timing of this, like you say, it's late in the game, but we had an early signing period and I don't have the Arizona totals right in front of me, but I talk to, as you well know, scads a few bloggers and broadcasters every day and looking at the big programs most of their work was already done so the early signing periods out of the way so this is happening at a better time this year than it would if it would have been last year with the february signing date right in front of uh, arizona with no coach so at least uh, they they've got a semblance of a class in place already it's not a good thing it's not, it's not good timing, but it's better than it would have been any other year. Yeah, um, but those guys can petition the NCAA to be like out of their uh, agreement. Um, I don't know how much that happens. Uh, on the other hand, most of them, a lot of them, a lot of the big names said that if Yates was there, they're they're going to honor their commitment. And the funniest thing is that Rich Rodriguez is the one who always said, if there's a coaching change, you should let them out of their agreement. That's the ir irony here. <laughs> so he's the coaching change. And so all of his commitments. <laughs> so right now, Arizona has 16 uh, signees from 2018 and they have, Another 16? six that are considered hard commits. Uh, they've got the ninth rated class, according to 247 Sports, in the Pac-12, number 55 in the country. Yeah. All right. We've covered the coaching situation. Something needs to get done. You've been without a coach for 10 days, and it's uh, the rest of the signing period is right in front of us uh, the first week of February. So we can backtrack now, Shireen. So the Rich Rod. Uh, situation. I've not had a chance to talk to you since. Uh, okay. What seems odd to me, and I'll just set it up and then let you go because you know what's going on, but I, I've talked with a few people about it, is that, okay, there was an investigation done on his private matters uh, with a private firm, and they found him not guilty, not necessarily that they didn't dig up some other dirt and some other things were found out that weren't the best. But um, he was found not guilty. Uh, did the university kind of put that those findings together, even though not guilty, but put maybe some unsavory type of activity together with him, them not being necessarily that happy with the football performance down the stretch and say, OK, we're not overjoyed with the football situation and his uh, behavior is a bit sketchy. So put all those things together, we want a new football coach. So it wasn't one or the other, or was it just football and they made an excuse, or was it all the, the uh, misconduct? It was everything put together. Um, the rumors were that Hiki had already made up his mind before the investigation. It's um, it's kind of a he said she said, but um, you know uh, and they didn't find cause, um, the cause that would allow him not to be paid out. Skills and she went ahead and filed a seven point five million dollar lawsuit, which makes me think. Well, you quit the job, you weren't the coach, and now suing the school, I believe, as well. Um, but it, 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 but Abby has had her own situations there at the school, um, like salacious stuff. <laughs> That she, uh, she received pictures from players' genitalia, but she's not telling you the whole story, right? And, and then she's very close to family, and uh, Raquel Rodriguez came out and showed a chat where they were, you know, loving it up together. And then Red Rock, and they're just, they were just shocked that she would turn around and do this. Um, but then there, I guess there's some of... Uh, 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 there was her and things secret and some secret book and it's just too much like all that stuff coming out just even as an allegation with a brand new 
Yes. Plus, they lost their last four games and the bowl game. And I think at that point, you know, there might have been some disengagement. From He's only been good to me. He's always respected me. He's always treated me well. He's never treated me badly. He never just never interaction with him has always been great, you know. Um, so for my personal experience, uh, with Rich Rodriguez, he's always treated me as a woman with the utmost respect and as a broadcaster and, and there. But stuff happens in the office, you know, it's football and, and I've worked in an office for three decades. So stuff incident on purpose, whatever. I, you know, I don't know what the culture was, but it was hostile enough for the AD to say, okay, Oh, this year, yes, he did a good job, but we didn't even win the bowl game. And, and so everything just came together for the AD. And I think he, he thought it was time. Um, I think there's a lot more that would come out about the assistant that is filing this lawsuit. She was um, sexually harassed. I believe her. Um, as a one those things. a lot more going on it's all going to come out and so you know the truth is always somewhere in the middle so i i either quit the job or or i you know complaining to hr really never works because i really don't know what's going on over there i just telling you my experiences uh it's a thing it really is a thing i worked in entertainment thing you know but there's the truth is somewhere in the middle and i don't always believe one side i know there's always other stuff. this is courts i think it'll be settled because no one wants all this stuff coming out now rich rodriguez did say he had an extra to as she was in the middle of it all um, who knows what she was feeling? <laughs> I have no idea. So, so. All right, Shereen Ryan. What happens here is doing the zealots. Sorry, Shereen, if I cut you off there. I am truly hoping that everything that you gave us concerning the coaching situation and the Rich Rod firing comes through. I, I'm going to apologize beforehand to you and everybody watching if. Uh, if uh, the information is a little broken up or a lot broken up. Uh, so hopefully that came through and will on the record. And, and, uh, cause I know that you delivered as you always do. If not, you just cut it out. That's fine. <laughs> All right, Shereen, you have a great uh, weekend and we appreciate you stopping by to kind of clarify what's going on with this coaching search. And hopefully they, they get the right guy. I hope so because we have a quarterback. About it. Something up. Donovan Tate left. Brandon's probably not happy. Brandon Dawkins may want to transfer. You've got um, the, the George got Rhett Rod who probably leave right and um, Zach uh, graduated. So you're down to so they're they're going to have to recruit at quarterback right now. So I just want to throw that out. <laughs> out there. All right. Well, they play in the Pac-12 and they play big time football. So somebody's going to want to take snaps at quarterback for Arizona. They'll they'll find somebody. They need to find about three guys possibly. But uh, all right, Shereen Ryan from uh, Zona Zell. It's breaking down uh, the Arizona coaching situation. That's been a whirlwind for the last few days, and will probably continue to be until they make a decision, which is imminent. Anytime Imminent. soon. Imminent. All right, Shereen. Stuff, cats.